coming up with that. Um, I think this is really nice, but they're just trying to, I, I don't know. This is something cool about making plugins for your own DAWs. You can have it open up into a giant screen like this, and it's like in the, uh, in the DAW, you know. Um, but something that I noticed that was interesting as I was reading about these is, let's look at this, analog, I'm going to highlight it right here, analog uses no sampling or wavetables. The sound is simply calculated in real time by the CPU according to the values of each parameter. The values of each parameter, there's a period, let me deliver that differently. This sound synthesis method ensures unmatched sound quality, realism, warmth, and playing dynamics. Okay, so what's going on is, and it's right in the name, a wavetable is just reading wave values, amplitude values from a wave, right? Uh, from a, like a buffer, a wave shape. And I, I'm on noise right now, but let's go to um, something. Let's go to the basics here. Here's a sine wave, right? Here's a square and triangle. We could calculate this. There is an equation for this as well. I have it in Pulsar. Um, Pulsar is interesting because I, I, uh, I don't draw them in. I don't just make a huge array of 1,024 samples. Uh, I still calculate them, but I just calculate them the one time, right? Uh, We'll get to that in just a little bit, how analog calculates it each time. Uh, so wavetable, it's going to fill it up with the amplitude values starting from 0 and then up to 1 and then down to negative 1 and then back to 0. Uh, is what I presume, either that or it's normalized from 0 to 1. Uh, whether it's a sine wave, square wave, whatever, that's what it ends up doing. And it's just reading it back from a buffer, from an array of float values from negative 1 to 1. Uh, or if it's normalized, but I'm pretty sure it would be negative, it would be assigned normalized value okay but what's really going on with analog in this quaint little guy down here if you can even see it is that each time it's running like let's say we're playing a sine wave it is calculating the phase increment the theta the uh phase step i hear it called sometimes how the the change the delta value uh at each sample right based on and then it'll loop it around two pi right and if it's a higher frequency it has a higher phase increment so it's going through that cycle faster but it's calculating it each time whereas with wavetable it would have calculated it ahead of time and they're going to be calculating it probably the same way unless someone actively drew in the values for wavetable but let's hear a couple differences between them so first of all i'm just going to play some sine waves Let me actually play some notes. Okay, let's hear it on wavetable. Should be the same thing. So presumably, it would actually take less processing power for wavetable because we don't have to calculate the amplitude values for each sample. I mean, that's a lot of calculations, but it's a computer also, so it can do a lot of calculations on its own. Let me just play a couple, uh, six notes, right? Six voices. And if we can trust their CPU, we're sitting at about 7%, 8%, right? And this is, doesn't have some of the other effects going at the same time. Let's switch it over now to analog and see what happens. And you'd think it would start kind of bogging down, but we'll see. It's only 5%. So I don't know what to make of that. Uh, I have always been told, even just in the Juice tutorials, that like, oh, a wavetable is going to save processing power. It's a lookup table, right? And you can just uh, look up the value of the function rather than calculating it each time. But it's, I think the calculation is so trivial that it really doesn't change much um, to have to calculate it each time, right? Um, but let's... So I thought that was interesting, but let's get into what I really wanted to talk about, which is the noise of these, right? And noise in a wavetable, in a lookup table, is kind of counterintuitive. It's kind of counterintuitive, if I could pronounce it. Because a wave that is noisy is one that is aperiodic, right? It is not the same wave shape, whether it's a different frequency, different wavelength itself, and duration and period, um, or just the shape and the spectrum of the wave right? So when we look at wavetable, well, how does that work? Because a wavetable is just reading the same wavetable over and over again. And 
if I go into the noise and play it, swept noise, it's gonna be white noise, but then just different harmonics or different filterings of it. So when I play this, it still has like a pitch. That's not noise. <laughs> if noise does not have a pitch like that. Oh, well, duh. Let me try that again. I was playing analog anyways. Okay, there's still pretty clearly a pitch. If I did this, yeah, it'd get pretty messed up, right? So what I was trying to do was maybe use the uh, modulator, but there's not... If, the thing is, is... Uh, so let me explain what's happening first uh, and why the LFO does not, from Wavetable will not let you create noise properly. So right now you see this yellow wave shape, and it's complicated. It's really a weird spectrum, but it's being repeated every time, especially if I don't have the LFO going. It's, it's a weird spectra. It might be a noisy spectra, or inharmonic spectra. Maybe not, I can't say noisy, because it's not aperiodic. It is absolutely periodic. It's playing exactly that wave shape every period, right? It's reading through the 1,024 samples that Ableton made in this preset. Um, and the only way we could really create noise is by jumping around, so that way it is not, you don't have subsequent uh, periods of the same wave shape. Right, and we'd have to be doing that really fast. In fact, we'd have to be FM modulating it at the same rate, I guess. But with the, we'd need randomness at somewhere else. And this got me thinking. Oh, I guess at some point, if you want to have noise in your synth, you have to calculate it at the sample level. Uh, maybe every buffer you could redraw it. I don't know. Yeah, you could calculate them buffer by buffer, but each sample would still have to be calculated randomly. Um, you could get in stochasticism with random walks. I was talking about this with Dr. Thompson right before I graduated. He was working on something like this where uh, it completes and then it each part of the wave shape can only move by so much. Um, so yeah, that, that's neither here nor there. I'm getting sidetracked. So with a wavetable like this, with the wavetable synthesizer, digital wavetable synthesizer, the whole functionality of it is having uh, a predetermined waveform right but the whole nature of noise of white noise pink noise whatever you know they're just different filterings is not having a fixed wave shape so by that's kind of a limitation of wavetable and that is something that analog can do quite well let's go to noise on this pure noise i'm here i'm gonna play up really high play up really low play down really low Oh, it's the same, okay? That's not the case for Wavetable. That's really high. That's really low. That's not noise. Uh, now, trust me, you can still use that quite well. And sometimes this is actually more useful, but you have to calculate it at the sample level, the amplitude values. You can't read it back. You can't read back noise because it is unpredictable. It can't be stored. It has to be generated randomly. So just a thought for you to consider when you're composing, especially in Ableton. Um, I, it got me thinking, though, I want to, because I'm kind of doubtful, I'm dubious as to how much better analog is at recreating analog. Like, why do they call it analog? Oh, because it's calculated sample by sample. Is that really closer to what an analog synthesizer does? Because it's still digital. It's still creating an array of float amplitude values, signed amp normal amplitude values. So is it really more unless they're injecting in some weird crackles or something? And I was reading the instrument introduction, the manual thing on their website. Didn't really mention much like that. It's kind of, I don't know. I don't know what I think of it. Now, there's another thing with wavetables that kind of drives me nuts. And, and it, I read about it. It makes a little bit more sense to me. But let's do it right now. So when we come over here... Uh, one of the things that people love about wavetables, and then when I made a synth, they're like, oh, you got to put this in. Oh, it's so great. I want to be able to drag and drop a sample and turn it into a wavetable. But think about that. What are, you, what are you actually trying to do with that? Are you looking for like a, a sampler? Because that's one thing. But a wavetable like this, a wavetable vector interpolator uh, that lets you sweep through sounds that we like so much, uh, it's going through harmonic spectra, right? So even if we just go to the basics it's going from no harmonics 
to slight amount of, uh, let me, I had put a, an EQ on here. All right, so if we're gonna just play with a triangle wave, we can see there's a different spectra than if we go up to a sawtooth wave, it becomes uh, odd and even integer harmonics, and then square is odd harmonics, but without, uh, I should say the triangle wave is like a square wave, but the um, odd order harmonics drop at, I think, 60 dBs per octave or something like that. Um, so it's, it's just, a, the square is like a harsher, brighter sound, right? Uh, and everyone's like, oh, you know what's really cool is you can like drag something in and then make it into a wavetable. Yeah, but what does that mean? Right? Because it's converting it into a wavetable. It's not playing it back. And so it's not sampling it. It's not, because if we, if we brought in sampler, it would drop it in, it would take that sound clip and it would just play it back. And it would look like a waveform. Right, but what we're doing is we're splitting it into different harmonics of the original sound. So here's the original. Oops. Just dropped it in sampler there. Okay, let's go back. Does that sound anything like it? No, not at all. Let's take... Uh... Yeah, what is that? So consider what is actually happening. It was kind of driving me nuts where people are like, yeah, and then it just play, like, it would be cool with Pulsar if I could just put a hi-hat in and then play it back. Well, but that's not the same thing. Uh, it, this is splitting it up to, now I, I got to look at this here. So Raw says, when enabled, Raw will divide an audio sample into a set of 1,024 sample length waves. So this is actually looking at the time structure of the sound and it's going, okay, 1,024, 1,024, 1,024, blah, 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 blah. That takes a lot. We'd have to do about 48 of those to get one second of sound. So if it's a one-second clip that you dropped in there, it's going to cut it up into 48, because if it's at 48K, and it's about 1,000 per uh, wavetable, 1,024, it's going to cut it up into about 48 different wavetables. But there is a limit to it as well. So let's enable it. And if you notice, it really is only... Let me pop this up here real quick. Down at the bottom. And then just silence. Why? Because the clip had a bunch of silence at the end of it. And so when we're doing it raw, it's just going to split it up like that. Now, this would be really nice, though, because there are actually a bunch of free libraries of wavetables. And you could just make one long, like, literally WAV file or MP4 file or AIF file and just drop it in. It was two minutes long, and it would split it up into, like... If, if each of the wavetables inside of it is perfectly 1024, one, it would sound like noise because it's changing the wave shape every cycle, but two, this would actually work great. But you can see in most cases, you can't use the raw function. Um, doesn't mean there shouldn't be a raw function. I'm just saying, be aware of what you're using. Because right now, let's go through a bunch of them. There's, see, every time you see it flat, it's literally not gonna make any noise. There's no harmonics, there's no amplitude changes. It's just down at the bottom. If we got one that was longer, though, I wonder if there is one. Oh, yeah. Oh, so this one has silence at the beginning, I guess. Hey, let's get out of raw. Let's go through and uh, see. Here, they're not going uh, 1,024, 1,024, 1,000. They're not chopping it up in, like, the time domain and then just, like, making a wavetable out of every 1,024 samples. I, I don't know this, but I'm pretty sure they are processing them uh when raw is disabled the waves are processed to reduce unwanted artifacts and normalize the volume so maybe what i don't know what that means i haven't found it i looked at a, several tutorials no one is asking this question because no one gives a shit and i guess i'm just the only person who cares about like because i don't like instruments that pretend to that are just pulling some like illusion of control like you need to actually do it and if you don't, it's okay if they didn't accomplish that goal, but don't pretend that you're accomplishing the goal of turning a sample into a wavetable. Don't do that as an artist unless you have a concept of what is happening. You don't need to be able to program it, but just be aware that it's like, it's not chopping it up in the time domain. It's doing a frequency analysis of it and then creating a spectrum. It's like uh, for each bin, right? That's at least what I think is happening. But I don't know, it's not a bunch of sine waves either. Well, 
I don't know what they're doing. They're doing something different though, but be curious about this with me for God's sakes, because I'm going insane. And if you know what they're doing, or if you understand what I'm saying, help me figure this out. Like right here, it's not a sine wave, right? It's a collection of sine waves that are giving it a certain spectrum. Uh, and it, but from, when did this occur in the original sound? Standing in the rain, feather down. Oh, this is really pain, long too. Wow. Things, to like this is from cymatics. See, this one we could probably do raw and it'd be okay. Yeah, look. See, this I do understand. It's splitting up in the time to domain. Uh, what does it mean to be processed? When raw is disabled, the waves are processed to reduce unwanted artifacts and normalize the volume. Yeah, I don't know what that means. <clears throat> you think it would just cut out the silences, right? But it's doing something very different than that. Let's put a short one in. And I saw um, Seed to Stage. I love that guy. He, he really does the best Ableton tutorials by far. Um, and I want to copy his. He does such a great job. But what I noticed was that when he put it in a really low octave, it started to sound normal again. So maybe they made C0 the base at which it doesn't transpose. And it's really just like a sampler now when it's in raw mode, I should say. This is not the same though. I, I think it, it must be creating them. All right, I'm rambling enough. But anyways, ask questions about this because it doesn't make sense. And someone from Ableton, please explain this to me or serum or massive or someone with the wavetable who likes to say like oh and you can drag in a sound and stuff but yeah but what is it actually fucking happening okay and if you don't know it's it's totally great to experiment too but don't act like you know oh my god i'm gonna go crazy so keep experimenting with these and let me know if you understand this better than i do i think it's doing like a frequency domain analysis but over what what's the bin size what's the window size blah 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 um but yeah, let me know if you have any questions or if that made any sense to you. All right, bye.